Okay, I know the last video got a little bit long in writing the sprite class. My apologies for that. But now we're going to use that sprite class to load and display uh, the soccer ball and the foot onto the window. I have just made a very basic uh, JavaFX application here. So public class interface, which extends application. I made two constants to define the size of the window. It's going to be an 800 by 600 uh, window on my screen. And I made a private group that I call game screen. That's the one that I'm going to put uh, the soccer ball and the foot into. I'm going to put them in there in a minute. Uh, remember in the first video, I was talking a little bit about uh, maintaining a game state between playing the game and seeing a title screen. This is one of the things that's going to help me do that. I'll have a game screen group with all the stuff that is on the screen while you're playing the game. And I'll have a title screen group eventually. They'll have all the stuff that's on the title screen. And then when I want to change the state between the title screen and playing, I'll just hide the title screen group and I'll show the game screen group. Um, in the start method right now, I have to make a second group or another group that I call the root of all the groups. It's the, the first element in the scene tree is the, the language that JavaFX would use. Um, and right now the uh, root group is, I'm going to get the children for that and add the game screen to it. Right, right now that's the only thing that I have to add. Uh, and then I build my scene. The scene is based off of the root node and it has the width of the game and the height of the game and the background color green, right? And then I make the primary stage from that scene. I gave it a title, made it not resizable and show it. So if I run the program, just a basic green window. Let's put the ball and the foot onto it. So I made the sprite class in order to hold the objects that are gonna be moved around the, uh, the screen during my game. So I want a public sprite ball. And remember from my sprite class that in order to construct a new sprite object, so I would say new sprite, I need to provide the name of the picture that is going to create the sprite. So in my project over on the left side of my package explorer, I put the pictures into the folder, uh, but I didn't refresh. Just give me a second here to refresh. All right, so there's my images folder, and you can see it has the soccer ball and the soccer shoe uh, images in it. So to make a new sprite, I can create a new sprite. This is the soccer ball by giving it a new image with the file being uh, images slash, not slash, soccerball.png. And similarly, I can create a sprite for the foot. And it's going to be equal to a new sprite based off of the picture file images. Shoot.png. Now, just by creating them, that doesn't add them onto the screen, right? I have to put them into the group. Here's a neat little tidbit. When I'm making the group, I only just learned this the other week myself. When I'm making the group, I can say the things that I want to be in the group. So I can just put the ball and the foot into the group right now like that. Right now that I've placed them in the group, uh, if I play this, they should actually appear on screen already. But remember, they'll be in the top left corner. All right. So there they are. There's the ball. There's the foot top left corner because they're placed at zero, zero. Let's space them out a little bit nicer than that. And that's something I'm going to do in the constructor for the interface object. Remember the constructor's job is to set up all of the default or starting values for the attributes of the class. And right now the ball and the foot are two attributes of the class. I don't need to change anything about the game screen. Uh, so I don't have to write any code in the interface constructor. So to move the ball, it's going to be ball. That's the name of the object dot. And I made the set position methods for my ball. I could 
use two lines and set the X position and then the Y position, or I could use that utility method that I made and set both at the same time. I can set the location X and Y. Uh, I would like it to be somewhere near the top of the screen, not at the entire game width. Somewhere near the top of the screen, maybe uh, 200 pixels down from the top. Let's say, th well, the game height is 600, so 300 would be halfway down the screen. I want to be a little bit higher than that. Let's say 200, right? And I happen to know that the uh, picture of the soccer ball is uh, 48 by 48. So half of that would be 24. I want to get this right in the center of the screen. So if I went uh, the game width <clears throat> divided by 2 and then subtracted half the width of the ball. Well, I could do subtract 24, but remember, I have the width method for the ball as well. So I could do ball dot get width and then just divide that by two as well. So that'll put it exactly in the middle of the screen, 200 pixels from the top. And what about the foot? Let's set the starting position of the foot as well. Uh, I would also like that one to be right in the middle of the screen. So game width divided by two, but then subtract half the width of the foot. And I want that one to be somewhere near the bottom of the screen. If the screen is 600 tall, maybe I'll put it at, uh, I don't know, 500. So it'll be right near the bottom of the screen. And let's just see how that looks. All right, there's my soccer ball and my soccer uh, shoe. Spaced out, placed kind of nicely for the beginning of the game. In the next video, we're going to get those animated.